In this shot of Rob Crabtree playing his pipes, notice the natural posture and the relative ease with which he is blowing his instrument. He looks comfortable and in control, not contorted or struggling. His bagpipe is steady and in tune, which means that his reeds are not saturated with moisture. That marvelous playing is a result of years of practice and a good pipe bag. The pipe bag has much to do with whether your pipes will be comfortable to play and whether they will stay in tune for long periods of time. Today, there are two main types of pipe bag. The synthetic bag is a fairly recent development in piping. The bag is made of an airtight, yet water permeable material. They require no seasoning or treatment of the bag. They come with pre-cut holes and attachments that make them easy to install. The second type of bag is the leather bag, cowhide or sheepskin. These have been in use for centuries and are the traditional bag of the Great Highland Bagpipe. The leather requires some treatment or seasoning on a regular basis for it to remain airtight. Holes must be cut into the leather and the stalks tied in. There are pros and cons to both of these bags, but over recent years, more and more of the piping community has gravitated toward the synthetic bag. So let's start with these. The synthetic pipe bag is one of the great piping innovations of the 1980s and 90s. They keep air in, but let moisture out, an important consideration in keeping reeds from becoming too wet. The original synthetic pipe bag was made of Gore-Tex, a trademark material used in the manufacture of waterproof jackets. But today, other materials are used as well. Synthetic bags come with pre-cut holes and rubber or plastic grommets or collars that make the installation of the stocks quite easy, even for an inexperienced piper. They require no maintenance and no seasoning to remain airtight, and they will last for years. As a result of their ease of use, they're particularly desirable among more casual pipers. Okay, now, if I wanted to look like this guy, I'd have to play him quite a bit higher there than I had him before. Maybe if I do that, it'll go a little bit better. Okay, right. Holy jeez, that's a lot lighter back there than I thought it was. Synthetic bags do have some disadvantages, as Duff just discovered. The first one is the lightness of their feel. Some pipers playing them for the first time are struck by the sensation that they're about to throw their pipes over their shoulder. Having said that, some of the best players in the world play synthetic bags, so I can assure you it's something you become accustomed to. The second concern is that some pipers say they have a bit of difficulty cutting off their pipes at the end of a band performance. But again, some of the best bands in the world are playing synthetic bags. The third concern comes into play if you're practicing your pipes more than 45 minutes or an hour a day. If you're using a synthetic bag, you're liable to have moisture problems on your reeds and in your drones. And moisture problems lead to tuning problems. And that is why the second type of synthetic bag we're going to talk about was developed. This is the canister bag, designed to circumvent most moisture problems. It was developed in the mid-1980s by Jeff Ross in Australia. He's one of the great piping innovators. The bag itself is made of a material similar to Gore-Tex, but the most striking feature is that the bag can be opened up at the back end so that you can get inside. The bag is filled with tubes, each of which goes to a different drone stock or chanter stock. Air cannot get to the reeds without passing through this central canister. Inside the canister is a desiccant, which is a granular material that absorbs moisture from your breath. Wet air from your breath passes through the canister and comes out much drier than it went in. This results in far fewer moisture problems in your reeds. Every few days, the piper removes the canister, dries the desiccant, 
and replaces the canister. This is a great system for pipers who play a lot but demand extraordinary steadiness out of their instrument. The tonal results are well worth any added cost or effort this bag may entail. At one time, not too long ago, all pipe bags were made of leather. Leather bags are identified primarily by color. Cowhide bags are brown, black, or gray. Sheepskin bags are unmistakably white. Cowhide bags are reliable, inexpensive, and long-lasting. They are the workhorses of Highland piping. Their disadvantage is that they're not great at dispelling moisture. If you are a wet blower who plays for 45 minutes or an hour or more a day, you'll end up with wet reeds and unsteady bagpipes. However, if you're a casual player who doesn't want to spend too much money on a bag, wants to play a natural bag, and doesn't want to have to do a lot of pipe bag maintenance, hide may be for you. Sheepskin, of course, is made from the skin of a sheep. It's a much more porous leather than cowhide. As a result, it requires frequent seasoning, sometimes once a month or more. The upside of the porous leather is that it's excellent at dispelling moisture from inside. If you're a wet blower and play quite a bit, you won't have as many moisture problems with sheepskin as you would with cowhide. If you don't play frequently, you'll spend a lot of time seasoning your sheepskin bag. Sheepskin is expensive and it's not long-lasting. An 18-month to two-year lifespan is quite normal. Once you see seasoning starting to seep through the skin and appear on the outside of the bag as a wet spot, it's time for a new sheepskin bag. Speaking of seasoning, we'll have a seasoning demonstration at the end of this video. The most important element in any pipe bag is absolute air tightness. For this reason, you should carry four number three rubber stoppers in your pipe box all the time. I use a small plastic container as a maintenance kit in my pipe box. Let's put our rubber stoppers in there now. We'll add more items to this kit as the video proceeds. Periodically, and especially if you're having trouble blowing your bagpipe, you should remove all your drones and your chanter, maybe even the bag cover. Cork up all the stalks and blow the bag up as tightly as you can. Set it aside for 30 seconds. If after 30 seconds, you can put another full breath into that bag, you have a leak. If you're playing a synthetic bag, you may find a leak in a grommet. You may just need to adjust it. If there's a hole in the actual fabric, you'll have to replace that bag. If you're playing a leather bag, you could have one or more of a number of problems. You could have a cracked stock or a loose tie-in. You may have a leaky valve. If this is the case, you should hear air hissing out through the leak, in which case you can find it and fix it. If all is quiet and the bag is still leaking, season it. Season it well. Rub the seasoning into the skin and into the welt. Blow it up tightly again. Try the 30 second test. If it still leaks, you may want to check the welt carefully. If you see seasoning coming out between the stitching, you have a leak. If you don't see seasoning, you may wish to apply some soapy water to the whole welt. If the soapy water bubbles up in the stitching, then yes, you do have a leak. This may go away with repeated seasonings and the bag will be okay. If it doesn't, try applying some silicone sealer or some aquarium cement. This will temporarily solve the problem. Ultimately, however, you'll have to replace this bag. You'll notice that all of these bags attach to the pipes in different ways. Synthetic bags may use rubber collars or plastic grommets and some special tape. They may use a system of hose clamps like this. 
In almost all cases, they will come with very explicit instructions on how to install them. This is not true about leather bags. Leather bags rarely come with instructions. Usually they don't even come with the holes cut. Tying in a leather bag is one of the great challenges of bagpipe maintenance. It's perhaps best left to the dealer who sold you the pipes. Maybe you have someone in your band who can help you tie one in. If you have to put one on yourself, there's a short bag tying in demo at the end of this video. One thing you will have to do for yourself is select the right size bag. How do you determine what is the best bag size for you? One way is to try other people's pipes and pick the one that feels best. Bag makers tend to make their bags in pretty standard sizes. When the bag is laid flat, measure it from top to bottom, just behind where the middle tenor drone would tie in. Here are typical bag sizes. A small is 9 to 10 inches in depth. A medium is 10 and a half inches. A large is 11 to 11 and a half inches, and the extra large is 12 inches. There's a myth in piping that you should try to play the largest bag you possibly can because it will make your pipes easier to blow. This is not true. What will make your pipes comfortable and easy to blow is not a Zeppelin under your arm, but a bag that is comfortable and that suits you. I recommend that if you are 5 foot 8 or less, you play a small bag. If you are up to 5 foot 11, try a medium. If you are 6 feet or more and fairly slight in build, you might try a large or an extra large. But even for big people, the medium or small may be just fine. Even if your bag is the perfect size for you, you may find that some sort of bag gripping attachment helps keep it in place under your arm. Bag gripping attachments are often homemade. They consist of a thin pad of rubber or foam material that is sewn or otherwise attached to your bag cover where it meets your rib cage. It adheres to your jacket or shirt to keep your bag in place. Your piping supplier probably carries some sort of gripping attachment. Ask them about it. 